be with you. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. Today is the day of Pentecost, a festival that is a kind of a holdover from the harvest feast in the Old Testament. Every culture and every country has a number of traditions and festivals that are held to commemorate something. And this morning we'll be looking at some of those things and what they mean for us today, all these years later. We do have a number of birthdays that are being celebrated this week, three of which are happening on May the 22nd. So, first of all, Gary Cranbell, wave Gary, um, has a birthday. Ken Thurston usually sits over here somewhere, not here. Um, how about Elaine Winichin? Not here, okay. Then May 24th, Dennis Kendall has a birthday. And on the 25th, Marina Julian has a birthday. Now I know that some of these people are going to be watching the video, so we're gonna sing to them. But Gary's here, so you can direct your eyes toward. <laughs> All right, let's sing. Are there any anniversaries or birthdays that we've missed? There are no anniversaries, so we'll keep going. I just want to let you know uh, some updated information about a number of people for whom we've been praying. So first of all, Warren Sass is back in the hospital. Um, his wife Darlene called me yesterday to let me know that he's back in the hospital. Um, they're trying to monitor and regulate his blood pressure. So that's something that they're trying to work on. And then, um, oh, wait for it. Why does this always happen? Wait. Keep talking. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, wait. Oh, man, I'm too young for this. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, Dale Pfeiffer. I talked to Adele this past week, and Dale has been moved, um, and I, now I can't remember where, but he's not living where they used to live on Preston. Park Ridge. Park Ridge, that's it. He's at Park Ridge now. Thank you. So he, they recently, he was recently moved there, simply so that he can get the care that he now needs. So he's at Park Ridge, and we'll remember them in our prayers as well. Thank you, Renata. All right, is there anything else that we should talk about? Oh, everything's on the screen for the worship service. We are privileged and blessed to have Gina here as a, a return engagement. Um, and we're very, very thankful for that. Let's stand then. Please take a moment to look at the camera if you're comfortable. Wave to each other and then we'll begin our service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We join together in our opening gospel song.
Please be seated. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness. The deliverance of the Lord comes to us today as we gather in this house of prayer, united as one with all people who trust in the name of Jesus. Let us search our hearts and minds, bowing before our gracious Father and confessing our sins to him. Delivering Lord, you invite all people into your holy house of prayer. We confess that we have not kept justice, choosing to go our own way instead of following your direction. We admit that we have not lived righteously, breaking your commands by what we think, say, and do. Saving Lord, you invite all people to know your mercy at the cross of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You defeated our enemies of sin and death. Help us to live in this victory, trusting in your promises and gathering with all your people to praise your name forever. Amen. My friends in Christ, deliverance has come to you. Salvation is yours to both Jews and Gentiles, to those of every nation under heaven. The good news of Jesus has been given. God has heard your prayer for mercy and has offered you a place in his kingdom as a called and ordained servant of the word. And by the authority of Jesus, my king, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as we sing our song of praise.
seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We hear God's word. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and you will... I will, and cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a sound and behold a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone and I looked and behold there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and the skin had covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves, and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves, and raise you from the graves, O my people." And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. <clears throat> and I will place you in your own land. <clears throat> then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as, it, as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devoted men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was her hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? 
And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? And others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the jo prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour my, out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it will come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. 
And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I did not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them right now, bear them right now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that you are, the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together in the sermon song. Grace, mercy, and the peace of God be unto all of you. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. The text is the gospel. Please be seated.
The Bible is filled with all kinds of numbers of significance. Let's not call it numerology because it's not. They're simply numbers that symbolize something else. And you can, I'll just go through some, and in your mind, you'll know what I mean. Um, three, seven, 40, 50, 144,000. Well, you get the point. 50, Pentecost. That's what it means. And traditions and special significant holidays, one of which happens tomorrow. It's Victoria Day. We think about these things and traditions. Every culture has them. Special holidays or festivals, we all have them. In Jewish history, for example, it's customary to celebrate the completion of the harvest 50 days after Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The winter harvest is collected. In the Old Testament, this became the time to commemorate the giving of the Torah. You know them as the Ten Commandments. To Moses on Mount Sinai. How good is your memory about that event? Do you recall what went together with that? Wind and fire, right? Does that ring a bell? The Passover of Christ himself from death to life occurs 50 days previous to this harvest celebration. It happens as the ingathering of the first fruits of the harvest occurs. On that day, the number of followers of Jesus grew by 3,000. And now again, with fire and wind. All of them saw fire and heard the wind. The good news, the gospel, was proclaimed to the whole world at that time. The Mediterranean region, in their own dialects and their own vernacular, all from the lips of those without any foreign, sorry, without any special foreign language training at all. For you becomes the gift of the Holy Spirit right there in the beginning with the hearing of your own ears. Faith, Paul reminds us, comes by, fe by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Jesus said, I baptize, sorry, John the baptizer said, I baptize you with water. But the one who is coming, who is greater than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Did I mention all of this? With fire? 120 disciples had tongues of fire reposed on their heads. Even the mother of Jesus, Mary. John the baptizer proclaimed to all of them, I baptize you with water, but the one who is coming, who is greater than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The promise of their baptism with water and the Holy Spirit's baptism with fire is now fulfilled. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is now judged. He will convict the world of sin. What does that mean? Not just sins, as in individual inappro inappropriate thoughts, words, and deeds, but rather sin with a capital S. The, the utter immorality that goes right to our core. It's one thing to see the symptoms, but another to diagnose the disease. 
We sin because we have sin. We are full of sin. Sinful, as it were. Now we need to be convicted of this. <coughs> Otherwise, we end up justifying ourselves and rationalizing away our sin in all matter of falsehoods. The biggest one, of course, is that if we can justify ourselves and rationalize away all of our sin, what is the point in being made right or justified in God's sight by Jesus? What's the point? But we are justified, made right in God's sight for the sake of Jesus. Remember, in your baptism, you are in Jesus, and so you are forgiven. Period. He will convict the world of righteousness. Jesus glorifies our humanity at the right hand of the Father after he ascends into heaven. We are not able to follow him there just yet. Not in our present state, of course. We have sin. We lack righteousness, and we are naked without that righteousness. We need to be covered by a righteousness not of our own making. Think about it this way. We have clothes for all manner of reasons. We have work clothes. We have party clothes. We have beach clothes. We have casual clothes. We have formal clothes. Clothes that are worn to suit the occasion. But here, we need a new set of clothes. Our own righteousness does not work here. Remember the first set of clothes that Adam and Eve wore to cover up their nakedness? They took upon themselves leaves, fig leaves, and tried to cover up their nakedness with fig leaves. That, of course, doesn't work. They deteriorate, they degrade, they get degraded, they fall apart. The fascinating thing is that God said, don't do that. I will provide for you a covering. And so he gave them animal skins, the skin of an animal that had to die in order to cover up or to provide covering for Adam and Eve. Now think about that. They tried to fix their sin by covering themselves with whatever they could find of their own accord and of their own works. I don't have to tell you anymore, do I? You can connect the dots. Jesus covers over their sin, and Jesus died in order to provide the covering for the sins of his people. How about the parable of the king's son's wedding, where the fellow shows up without the proper wedding attire? We can't appear before God with clothes made in a vain attempt to be holy. I just mentioned Adam and Eve. They tried to do the same thing. Make a covering that was self-stitched. As I mentioned, not a very effective way to do that. The same effectiveness as when we try to cover up our sin with our own leaves of our own efforts to be right and act right. All in a, an attempt to impress God by our goodness. God must provide the clothing, and he does. The skin of an animal. In order to be that covering, the creature must sacrifice its life for us. The creator becomes the sacrifice. Jesus becomes our righteousness, and the Father looks at us through this sacrifice named Jesus. Jesus is the one. In your baptism, you were and you are 
clothed in Christ, to wear Jesus as a sacrificial piece of clothing or covering. My friends in Christ, that happens to be the work of the Spirit, too. The Holy Spirit is the one who covers and clothes us with the robes of Christ's own righteousness. In this way, you can appear before the Father, and only in this way. The righteousness that is not your own, but the robes of the righteousness of Christ. We become his righteousness because he became our sin. That's the great exchange. You now stand before God justified, made right. Your sin is covered over by the made rightness of the robes of Christ's righteousness. He will convict the world concerning judgment. When sin and just and righteousness collide, it's called a crisis or a judgment. Now the evil one is brought down completely in the cross in the resurrection of Christ, conquering and vanquishing him. These are all things that happened on that very first Pentecost. The winds, the tongues of fire, the miracle of the languages. They were all marks of the church's big opening day. The balloons and fireworks showed the public start of Christ's last day, embassy. That is what the church is actually about, by the way. Being a foreign embassy in the world, and yet not of it. Its mission, function, purpose, and objective is to proclaim the reign of Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Pentecost. 50 days, the church, the word, the harvest. These are all things that every one of you baptized in Christ is a part of. You are all part of these things, having been called, gathered, enlightened, sanctified, kept in the faith by the Holy Spirit. You, my friends in Christ, you are forgiven. God's love began for you on the cross of Christ. It endures through your baptism, was poured out for you on, the, on your life on the day you were baptized in Holy Communion and the Word of God for you. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, keep telling us the good news of Jesus into our ears, our minds, our hearts, that we may hear it, understand it, and believe it. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle them in them the fire of your love. Amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep you now and forever in Christ. Amen. Let's stand as we sing together the, hymn, the song of response.
Please be seated. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe... Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Jesus Christ has spoken. Glorify his name among us in every word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, guide the church into all truth by your Holy Spirit through your word that we may be guarded from all error and false doctrine and other great shame and vice. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, give hope to your people in the midst of this world of death and despair. Put your spirit within us to believe, to live and to serve according to your promises and commands. Lead our homes to confess our confidence in your power to raise the dead now and at the last day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to you for the people of this world in all the regions where there is war. We pray for all who are experiencing war and death. Bless the leaders with wisdom, vision and perseverance needed to build together a world of justice and solidarity and to break down walls of hostility and division. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, be near to those you have set in place to govern our land. Do not let the ruler of this world govern them and their decisions to our harm, but give us the benefits of good government. Lord, in your mercy. We call upon your name, O Lord, praying in your spirit, to help and to bring healing to your servants. We pray for Lorraine Biblo as she continues to, under, to suffer from shingles. Bless and keep her now. We pray for healing in her body. For Warren Sass, Dale Pfeiffer, Melanie, Lucas, Alma Kohlberg, Elsa Schmeling, Lorraine Kendall, Barry Hembroff, and those we now name in our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy, renew the face of the earth, look with favor on your creatures, and fill the hearts of your faithful, kindling in them the fire of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon your faithful people that convicted of their sin, they may also be convinced that the righteousness of Christ is theirs. And in such repentance and faith, receive the things of earth of Christ declared in his supper, his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Unite us by your spirit of truth in faith and confession and comfort us with the knowledge that this world's prince is judged. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God, comfort those who grieve. Assure them that since Christ has gone away to the cross and has risen victorious over death, so those who go away from us in this life will rise also to everlasting life. 
Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through your Son you have promised your Holy Spirit who would convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Enlighten our hearts that we would confess our sins, obtain everlasting righteousness through faith in Christ, and through every trial and temptation, abide in the consolation that Christ is Lord over the devil, death, and all things. We ask that you would graciously deliver us from all affliction to make us partakers of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Receive now the benediction and blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We join together in the closing song. Great is
Please be seated. Thank you for taking the time to be with us in worship this morning. Thank you to those who have taken the time to watch the video. Just a couple of announcements. Um, this coming Tuesday will be the final session of the Luther movie uh, Bible study series that we've been doing now. Um, starts at 7, will be finished at, at 8.30. Bring your Bibles. Um, we're going to do a, a little bit of a summary a review and then take some time to discover the, or rediscover all the things that um, Luther was able to find inspired by the Holy Spirit. All right, one last thing. Um, I want to thank Gina and Eunice for the gifts of music they provided over the last two weeks. It's been a wonderful process for us at Faith. Um, you know that we all love music and we're very appreciative of the fact that you were able to be with us. And Eunice for making sure this all took place. Thank you for that. Now, those of you who are on our board of directors, I've taken the liberty to look through the church constitution. And wouldn't you believe that there's a little obscure provision that allows visiting musicians from the city of Boston to bypass all the normal requirements for membership. And according to that provision, um, as soon as they're willing and able, uh, they can become members. So no pressure, Gina. <laughs> well, I, you know what, I should be really careful. That was all a bald-faced lie. <laughs> and I'm, what, 20 feet away from the altar of the Lord. So I'm going to hurry and get out of here because if the lightning comes, maybe, maybe he'll miss. Now in seriousness, thank you for giving us the gift of all that music. Let's thank her again. Thank you. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? Wonderful. Go in peace. <laughs>